This week on Worldview, the new quad on the block. Will India's latest quad with Israel run into trouble with Iran? Hello and welcome to Worldview at the Hindu with me, Sohasini Heather. Uh, strengthening ties with uh, our closest allies and partners in Central and in our, of our foreign policy. And I think bringing friends together um, in, in new ways, uh, we are making these partnerships even greater than the sum of their parts. Now, earlier this month, External Affairs Minister Jay Shankar joined the Israel Foreign Minister, Yair Lapid, uh, in a video conference along with, uh, he was in Jerusalem, they were both in Jerusalem, of course, in a video conference along with the US uh, Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, and then the UAE, United Arab Emirates Foreign Minister, Sheikh Abdullah bin Zayed. It is being called the new Quad in West Asia, or the Middle East, uh, as it is widely called, as opposed to the other Quad, in the Indo-Pacific, of course, India, US, Australia, and Japan. Now, events moved rapidly, and within a week, New Delhi became the venue for an Iran-Israel spat after the new Israeli ambassador, Nir Gilon, uh, accused Israel of destabilizing the region. He indicated that last year's Abraham Accords uh, that saw the UAE and Israel establish diplomatic relations with each other, as well as this new Quad, were actually in some way a result of concerns about Iran. Uh, the Iranian embassy in Delhi hit back, calling the envoy, quote, childish uh, and adventurous and referred to Israel as a murderous regime. While such spats are really not uncommon between Tehran and Jerusalem, Tel Aviv, it is rare to see New Delhi, which has thus far been careful about maintaining its good ties with both countries, become the setting for the latest round. Some speculation that Iran's decision to hold a foreign minister's meeting of uh, regional countries on Afghanistan that didn't include India was somehow linked to its unhappiness over the new Quad. So to begin with, why are the Middle Eastern Quad, as we're going to call it, or the MEQ, uh, and the Indo-Pacific Quad, the IPQ, why are they even being compared, apart from the fact that, of course, they uh, involve four countries each? To begin with, both the quads have the US and India in them. America and India are part of both the IPQ and the MEQ. And that itself indicates a degree of strategic closeness for the entire quad. While it looks like the US would like to see the Indo-Pacific quad as a way to counter China, Israel would certainly like to see the new arrangement of the MEQ as a counter to Iran. Now remember, neither is being billed as an alliance at present. Much like the Indo-Pacific Quad is largely discussing soft subjects like climate change, COVID vaccines, disaster management, data flows, resilient supply chains, uh, officials are insisting that the MEQ is only meant for in economic and infrastructure cooperation. Interestingly, all IPQ Quad countries uh, that take part in uh, the Malabar maritime exercises together, this year, for the first time, Israel's largest ever blue flag Air Force exercises in October that normally include India and the US also saw the UAE join as an observer. So some comparisons being made there. Um, for India, both quads involve partnerships with countries relatively geographically further away. Uh, and the repercussions of those partnerships are felt very much in India's neighborhood to China and the East on one side, and of course, to Pakistan, Iran on the other. But there are some very important differences between these two quads, apart from the geography of where they are located. The IP quad, the Indo-Pacific quad, for example, grew out of a 15-year process. Uh, it actually uh, grew from a coordination first between officials. It was later, much later, bumped up to ministers and then saw a summit between the leadership only in 2021. Uh, the Emmy Quad, on the other uh, hand, has begun with a bang of sorts, uh, the foreign minister level uh, meeting straight away. So it's expected to be upgraded much faster as the cooperation increases. Uh, another big difference, while the IP Quad has a definite strategic focus, remember, it is that of keeping uh, a free and open Indo-Pacific along with the centrality of the ASEAN region and ASEAN countries in mind, the MEQ, the Middle Eastern Quad, is not at present looking at any strategic focus, say officials. It's not involving the rest of the Gulf region, for example, in its deliberations in any way. 
Now, the IPQ has branched out in a number of different areas, all of which need government-to-government -government collaborations, G2G. But MEQ officials are presently saying they're looking only at economic uh, collaborations, really by private companies, that will bring together US and UAE's financial and knowledge support, Israeli technical and R&D expertise, as well as India's manufacturing capabilities. But most importantly, there's this difference. The IP Quad or the IPQ has been strengthened due to India's tensions with China. And the PLA's incursions at the line of actual control have been a big part of strengthening India's engagement with the Indo-Pacific Quad. But in contrast, India's relations with I Iran have actually been very, very strong. Uh, many visits by uh, Mr. Jai Shankar to Iran just in the past few months. As we discussed in a previous edition of Worldview, uh, India and Iran have very close ties for a number of reasons. And clearly, New Delhi is not going to wish to jeopardize them at present. Uh, quickly to take you through some of those reasons. First, there is the traditional and historical ties they share as neighbors. They have cultural affinities as well. Uh, until US sanctions kicked in and India decided to uh, agree to those sanctions, Iran was actually a top supplier of oil uh, to India. India, of course, sees Iran as an alternative access route to Afghanistan and Central Asia, particularly given its problems with Pakistan. India is part of a trilateral with Iran and Afghanistan to develop Chabahar port as well, which we've spoken about. India and Iran share common concerns about terrorism in Afghanistan and have often used a common platform on talking about the Taliban. And finally, India's larger connectivity dreams really to its west lie along the international north-south transport corridor that runs right through Iran. So the Quad came about when Mr. Jai Shankar was in Israel for a bilateral visit, one of the, the in fact, the first such visit with the new administration in Israel. And of course, Israel-India relations are important for a number of reasons, not just the high-level meetings between them. Uh, the two countries are strategic partners. This is made stronger by the fact that Israel really currently has no ties with Pakistan. Uh, they have a lot of defense trade. India is uh, the largest buyer for Israeli military equipment, it is said. And, Isra uh, and, and Israel is also the second largest defense supply to India after Russia. Um, that, that figure changes, but it's certainly one of the largest. Uh, India and Israel have now agreed to grow their trade through uh, free trade agreement negotiations, uh, and certainly you have a lot of bilateral trade that uh, potential over there. They have common concerns on terrorism in particular, a very strong counter-terrorism relationship, and they have an agricultural partnership together. Remember, Israel has uh, one of its only water attaches around the world stationed at its embassy in Delhi. There is also very strong cultural affinities, historical affinities between uh, Israelis and Indians, and that has led to an ever closer relationship, particularly since India established full diplomatic relations with Israel uh, in, in the early 1990s. Uh, and we expect in 2022 that there will be many more high-level visits between the two countries. So all in all, the new Quad is very much a work in progress. It is not at all clear just how far all the partners in it really wish to go with the new formation. That was announced as a bit of a surprise. It did come quite quickly. I remember just a few months ago, the US had actually announced a very different quadrilateral with Uzbekistan, Afghanistan and Pakistan. And that appears to be suspended for the moment. So it really remains to be seen how this one will pan out. And as we have discussed, India is part of so many other arrangements with Russia, even with China, also Iran. It'll be hard to strengthen one partnership at the cost of any others. Finally, India has just too much stake in good ties, both with Iran and with Israel separately. These are very, very different relationships. It must avoid the overlap or clubbing them together in any sphere. So we will watch this space for you. Join us again on Worldview. And I, I do have some book recommendations as well. A classic, of course, about the region, a good way to understand uh, the West and uh, the Middle East is Orientalism by Edward Said. That's a very, very old book. Uh, there are also two books by an author I follow called Trita Parsi, The Treacherous Alliance, The Secret Dealings of Israel, Iran, and the United States, and a more re recent one uh, called Losing an Enemy about the JCPOA talks between the Obama administration and Iran. Uh, another book by Jeremy Pressman, The Sword is Not Enough, uh, Arabs, Israelis, 
and the Limits of Military Force. And this book really looks, uh, by Jeremy Pressman, really looks at the futility of the continuing conflict. Uh, two books by Indians, one I've rec uh, recommended before is India's Israel Policy by P. R. Kumaraswamy. And then there's one very pertinent called Essays on Iran and Israel, an Indian Perspective by Sujata Chima. It's about seven years old, so it doesn't have all the latest uh, events in it, but certainly very good perspective. That's all we have time for here on Worldview, but do join us again. And from the team here, thanks for watching.